Guys, it's your boy J Fab coming back at you with part two of the mini bike build. So we're here now. I already got some rear swing arm brackets or I guess spindles started and tacked on and we're gonna continue from there. So once I get these finished welded and start building my custom swing arms, I will pick up the camera again and show you guys what's going on. So, so I got the pivot points welded onto the frame with little corner gussets. They're like eyeball straight, you know, they're not gonna be perfect, but this thing's only gonna cycle a couple inches of travel, so it's dialed enough. Little flux core 110 welds, looking aight. Okay, so I got the um, pivot points for the rear swing arm all kind of spaced out there, so those are doing good. They do rotate. I have them over tightened right now so that I can uh, finish doing the rest of the rear swing arm and not have them move as much, but it's looking pretty dialed. So this is just a two and a half inch sleeve that I got from my local Ace Hardware. It's one inch OD, half inch ID, got some grade eight half inch bolts. I'm gonna have to get some that are longer, obviously, to make it work. And this is just quarter inch by one inch flat bar that I welded both sides on with the flux core turned all the way up and should be plenty strong. So got the A-arms welded on and this is a simulated travel. So if I line up the bolts there, we measured it out and it'll be three and three quarter inches of suspension travel with a two inch stroke, 12 inch shock with a tab mounted like right there and mounted to halfway on the A-arm. So I was hoping to get about four inches. We're gonna end up a quarter inch less than that, which is honestly better because I didn't really realize what four inches of wheel travel would look like on the mini bike. It's actually quite a lot, so. Guys, so I have a loose mock-up of how the shocks are. Well, I guess it's not really a mock-up. Everything is welded in place, but these aren't fully secured, so. Those guys, I welded this shaft across, welded the nuts on the inside of this bar. So it has like a really solid support system. I'm gonna add some gussets from here over to these vertical bars, just to add a little bit more strength. Hey guys, so I got these little gusset braces out of quarter inch steel made to help with deflection from the shocks to strengthen that up a little bit. So, I mean, even these brackets alone would probably be strong enough. And with the top tube on top of that, add some triangulation. It isn't the best shape of triangle to add a good amount of, uh, of uh, deflection rigidity, but since this is one inch by quarter inch flat bar, it does add quite a bit of leverage just in that one inch portion there and there. And I notched them around the tube to make sure that I'll be dialed. So yeah. Okay, so I added quarter inch plate to these guys as gussets and ran it all the way up past the triangulation. <coughs> oh man, lots of flux core dust. Super good for you. So anyways, that's how those turned out. All in all, the wheelbase in the rear has got stretched a little over two inches which is perfect because I always thought the wheelbase is way too short on these, which I am going to be chopping off the head tube and building my own custom head tube. I got some bearings, found a chunk of pipe that the bearings fit in just right. Probably gonna move the head tube out here. Uh, so that'll stretch in another two or three inches and lessen the angle. So that'll be sick. Um, loving how it looks right now. Looks super gangster. Love my little bent piece that I did there. Shout out to the uh, Harbor Freight Thunder that I got like forever ago, a little 12 ton. Um, it works great if you're using like 120 wall or thicker small pipe. You get up to the bigger shit and all it does is kink. But I was very impressed by the bend quality. I mean, you can see there's no kinking on the inside or anything. It looks fantastic. Okay, so I just put the rear tire on and I'm pretty close. Like I think at max bump, it might rub the bottom of this bar a little bit but I don't really want that to happen. So I'm gonna add in another bar on top of this guy here, weld the two together, and then cut out this section so that there's more clearance for the tire. So I just chop the head tube off of the bike. Which honestly, it's kind of impressive, like not really. I don't know how I feel about their bearing design. It's all right, you know, whatever. I think it's sleeved all the way through, which is better than I thought. It's probably just like two small like scooter bearings of the sleeve on the inside. I don't know, whatever. So I ended up picking up these guys here and they're half inch bearings and they're press in and I found a piece of tube that will, uh, that they'll slip inside perfectly. 
And now I'm gonna get some three inch by one and a half square tubing and continue this basically out and up a little bit and then attach my new tube for the headset out here. And the pipe that's the right ID uh, for those bearings to put in. Got her all notched out to like military grade perfection there. You know, she's all dialed. Oh yeah, I took a washer later over the seam, kind of plug welded the middle and welded the outside just to make sure the head tube doesn't do some good separation things. I don't know, maybe thinking ahead, maybe overthinking, who knows. There we go, there's We're a smart. Kinda... Oh. Cracking open the Rockies. Cheers to this, boys. Do you guys ever kind of step back and wonder what the hell you're actually doing with your project here? Kind of having one of those moments right now, but I think she's gonna pan out pretty got good. Got the drop bracket for the seat, it's looking minty. I got the beefy up, you know, rear swing arm set up. It's coming along pretty good. Still not tied together. I went through all the work putting the tire on there. Didn't tie them together. Pretty smart guy. But hey, we started working on the other end of the bike to just forget about that completely, so. That's what she started off as. Bone stock Coleman CT200U. A, A, my bad. I didn't realize there's an A after it. guy was ever wondering how to build his own headset i should probably not touch it it's probably hot as shit um so these are like i don't even know what they are i i can't remember what they called them at the local hardware store you can get them at your local stands murray mart or ace hardware or whatever but essentially it's a pressing like flange bearing and they have them in generic sizes, like 5 8 ID. Like this one is one and three eighths uh, OD with a half inch insert. So I was just able to find a half inch grade eight bolt, a bunch of lock washers and some big washers. And the cool thing is, is that if you look, there's a little, the flange on the actual inner bearing portion comes down a little bit further. So when you have some straight bars, for your handlebar clamps, like something like this, it'll adapt over pretty, oh, sorry about that. It'll adapt over pretty easily. So you don't have to worry about that pressure being there because that washer is gonna set a barrier in between them. So you don't have to worry about the pressure clamping it down and making it harder to turn. No matter how tight you make this headset, it's still gonna have bearing contact instead of being stuck on the top of the race. Where on this setup here, you'd have to manually add a washer and the washer would rub against all the layers of the bearing, thus making it like grindy, hard to turn and shitty. Let me get you in the LED lights over here so you guys can get some HD action. Pretty badass. A little gusset on the bottom just for some extra strengths. Ties into the... Uh... I don't know what the hell that is, factory gusset. You know, just for safety precautions. Yeah, yeah, I just chopped down the factory fork. I just figured it'd be easier to use this because it's already like seven eighths bar and all of the grips and throttle tubes and everything I ordered, but it's completely buried in here. So I got a new OEM Honda throttle tube set up and then I got some, uh, Pro Taper pillow grips, because those are my favorite ones that I run on motocross bikes. Ordered those to toss on there as well. And that'll all sleeve onto these, so I don't have to build anything. So they already have radiuses. I'm gonna add a crossbar, you know, and put like a moto pad on it and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm also going to uh, plate this in right here and right here to try and make this more rigid, because as you can see, there's a slight bow to it there and probably a slight bow to it there. So I just cut out some gusset plates. Go right here on the fork. 
just to hold those together better because I did chop and sleeve that area in there. Um, it'll help with deflection and then I built or uh, I bent a couple pieces of pipe that I'm going to attach back here. Okay guys, so I got the lower fork tubes welded on. Looks pretty sick. Still have a good amount of steering angle. Probably just as much as a stock CT200 now. This coilover is gonna be mounted like in here to a cantilever system down here. Okay, so I got the, uh, I don't know what you call them, bushings, whatever. Yeah, steel bushings, half inch ID welded on to the forks. So now I can start building my pivot point for the front suspension. Should be titties, we'll see how it goes. Uh, still need to do some maths here real quick to figure this all out. Studs out of my 2006 Ford E150 build that I did a while ago and uh, used them for a brace for the fork, which actually looks kind of sick. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so I notched all this out, got it super accurate, and I was going to weld it together just like I did on the rear one. And then I was like, ah, I got an iron worker at work. So this one's like bent, but as long as I make the shit straight to the bushing, that's all that really matters. And then same with this one, this one's styled. So hell yeah, good shit. So I got those done. Now I can start building the front. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. Okay, so I just got the swing arms fabbed up, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Uh, add a little corner gusset plate just to strengthen up some deflection a little bit. Maybe add some strength to that bracket, who knows, whatever. Um, so they're like pretty much mostly straight and balanced and all nine yards. So I'm not really worried about it. Looks nice, whatever. Hell yeah. Um, and they are spaced properly for the front axle bolt. So that'll work out good and it'll pinch together what it needs to in there very nicely, which I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this in a way which adds more leverage than the rear because the front end of the bike doesn't need to be as stiff and it also has way less distance to use as a swing arm. I have really outdone myself here. So check this shit out. Beautiful, beautiful box. I mean, don't mind that fucking booger there. I mean, whatever. Uh, but, excuse my French, we got this dialed ass bracket right here. Hell yeah. If I grab a coil over, I'll kind of show you what's about it's supposed to look like. So this guy, just gonna sleeve up in there. Oh shit. And then that guy, will bolt down to there, like right there. That's pretty sick. That's like some classic Harley shit. Damn, dude. I have this very big, very big fucking wrench and I always wonder, oh, what I use that for? Well, Today is the day that this tool gets used. I don't know. Here it is, it goes up past my knee. It's very, it's very big. Maybe put it like this. I don't know, is that upside down? It's very big. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, right off the bat, I wanna say this thing looks sick as hell. But like any first time assembly, I've uh, kinda come across my own problems here. Spring rate is pretty good. The springs are on the lowest setting. And uh, I mean, they appear to be doing their job, you know? But um, anyways, front tire is not centered, which makes me think that maybe the tire was tilted before just because this setup was twisted before and it wasn't actually that side was longer, so I'm gonna try cutting that section out again and getting it centered up with the head tube here just so it's not off to the side, because I don't like the way that looks. Back here. So it looks like I sit on it. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Again, everything's on the low setting, but the front fork. I can just barely get that to bottom out. And the rear, I'm sure if I stood back here. So sick. <laughs> it's lined up and uh, doing well now. Hell yeah, so gangster. I'm honestly so excited about having this thing together. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Hell yeah. Now, 
It doesn't look like the rear end is lined up exactly the way I want it to either, but that can be adjusted the same simple way. We have reached destination fuck it with this project. So I'm gonna pull all the shocks off, uh, get this frame cleaned up, um, grease all the pivot points, toss everything back together and paint the ever living shit out of it and hope it turns out okay. So uh, next time I get back to you, we'll probably have so it So I have the uh, mini bike chassis hung up from the rafters. Um, so I am going to go mix myself a nice strong drink and get out the primer can and dust this whole thing down. Couldn't find any mixers, but I did just so happen to have one of these sitting in the fridge, so that'll do. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Executing a little bit more of my white privilege with this uh, white primer. Uh, my primary color I'm gonna do all over the whole thing. Well, I guess the whole build is just gonna be clapped out this color. Um, probably gonna name this bike like Banana Slag or something, cause it has hella slag all over it that I just never cleaned off from the flux core welder. Bunch of shit in there all over the fork, fucking, you know, whatever. And I'm painting it <clears throat> Sunshine Yellow Ace Premium Paint Primer. I don't know. If you guys have ever used this shit, you understand why I like it. It's, like, comparable to Rust-Oleum, but it's, like, $4 a can rather than, like, $6.70, $7 a can. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be bright yellow. Should be interesting. Got the final coat of paint on. Gonna let it sit overnight and get back to reassembling some stuff tomorrow. Uh, only thing I have left for fabrication is I need to build a custom fuel cell. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna build a custom fuel cell probably uh, tomorrow as I'm reassembling things and getting all the drivetrain bolted up. So it should be interesting. You guys have a good night. Thank you guys I'll see for you watching this video so far. Uh, it means a lot if you guys are checking it out. Um, Really, I do this kind of stuff, just document my own kind of builds here, and uh, it's pretty cool that some of you guys are interested enough to come uh, follow my own projects. This one's definitely going to be super neat. I'm uh, incredibly excited to finish this one up, and tomorrow will be pretty satisfying because it'll be more finalization stuff, getting the fuel system bolted up, getting the motor bolted back on, getting the drivetrain reassembled, getting the new grips on. Like, It's going to be gangster. So super excited for everything to come. Um, thanks for watching part two and part three, we'll get into some other stuff and hopefully we'll have it riding. I think I'll try to stretch that video out however long it takes to get that thing dialed in. I'm trying to have the bike ready for this weekend. It's Wednesday night right now at about 12 o'clock and uh, I'm going to uh, try to have it ready by tomorrow night or Friday night. So we'll see how it goes. Peace.